Good morning and welcome to Winnipeg. We are really getting a late start here this morning, especially being as I've been up for over five hours already. But uh, stuff's been happening. And uh, I wasn't able to get to the model table. Well, actually, that, that's not true. A couple hours ago, I, I did get to the model table. My coffee was hot. And I was about to have my first sip and get going, and uh, uh, the phone rings. Yeah, it was family stuff. Everything's okay. Everything's good. And then uh, I'm guessing, oh, about uh, uh, maybe 20 minutes ago now, I was noticing that there was a... Uh, where's the screen here that shows the side of my... This this screen right here, you can just barely see the the birdhouse that's fastened to the edge of the of the of the house right there, and I noticed that there was a bird sitting on the perch, and I thought, oh, I wonder if it, I was watching it to see if it was going to go into the uh, into the into the birdhouse, and uh, oh here this one right here, and it and it didn't, but it flew over to the bird feeder. And it's landed on the bird feeder, and I, I knew from last time I was out there that the column of seeds wasn't dropping down. So I felt sorry for the little bird. So I went out there with a wire and cleaned it out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I care. <laughs> but I do, and I think some of you do too. Anyway, uh, we do have a rollback. Fortunately, we've got a rollback, otherwise it would be a very short episode today, I imagine. Uh, yeah, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see you after the rollback, so let, let's uh, roll back. I'm having a hard time saying, finding things to say today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this. Okay, what I'd like to do this evening is uh, adjust these holes so that they will fit in the base of the turret. I guess you would call this sort of like the kingpin, only it's it's sort of half barbette and half kingpin, isn't it? Now, um... These, uh, there's, there's three of these, and they're all the same. Yeah, it's not even gonna, it's not even gonna be a tight fit. So we're gonna have to do, uh, <clears throat> quite a bit of scraping here. And I don't care if shavings go down inside, because it, you know, what's the difference? But before we get going here, there's something that happened a few minutes ago, just when I was coming to the model table to uh, to do this, I wasn't wearing my glasses, but when I looked down on the plywood floor, I saw what appeared to be a little O-ring. Well, it, it turns out it is an O-ring. And what had happened was, when I was using the high-pressure hose to clean out my... Uh, airbrush body here, I blew the o-ring right out and didn't notice. Yeah, I was I was uh, running air in back in this way and down in this way and uh, it's a good thing I spotted that because I, I don't know what I would have done. Uh, I don't think I have any o-rings that are, are this size. So uh, now the fact that it comes out that that's okay. Uh, but at least now I know it comes out. And I thought maybe I, I, I'd mention that because I think there's at least one other viewer who has got an, an airbrush exactly like this. So uh, it's something a person w wants to really be aware of. I, I don't think it's going to be too hard to put back in. I'll just recompose and see how easily it slips in. Maybe I'll put the macro lens on.
Yeah, I can see why that would have come out. It's a very loose fit. I'm just going to have to, well, like I said, now that I'm aware that that can happen, uh, uh, maybe what I'll do is when I, that will be part of the cleaning process, I'll just remove that O-ring to start with. Then I don't need to worry about it. It might be a good idea anyway, because it could be that there would be paint which sort of get underneath there. Yeah, okay, well, now we know. Okay, it appears to me that if we get rid of this, these four uh, pieces of flashing and sort of round it out and, and don't touch here or here or here or here, or at least very little, maybe just a little bit right there. Uh, yeah, and then we should be able to, otherwise if I make the hole too big, it's going to not be centered, right? Okay, let's... Uh, what am I going to use here? I think I'm going to have to uh, get some sort of a rasp. Now, do you remember, I think it was yesterday I was saying I was missing one of these? Well, I found it. I wasn't even looking for it. It was over on the shelf beside the telephone. I would have never looked there for it. But that, that's where it was. I don't know if we need to stick it back down or not. Okay. Good as new. Okay, we do have this file here. That was from that uh, precision file set that uh, I think it was Chris got that for us, didn't he? But there's something else I want to try here. And uh, this may not be a good idea. But I, like I say, I just want to give it a try. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. Maybe I'll just uh, go around a little bit more with the file here and
Yeah. Okay, I'll just do that on the other two as well. There are only three three turrets on this. This is not like the uh, the hood, which had four. Okay, I have put on here, oh, half a dozen or so more pieces. And I was uh, getting my M M2s here and the M30s lined up to put on. And I was noticing that we only had two more on the pallet. And I w was wondering, well, how many more do we have to go? And I was found that in the back here we have to have at least f four more. Um, so I thought, now what? So when I checked the M sprues, it turns out that I had not nipped off a, a whole bunch of them here. So uh, I found six more on the sprues, so I thought I may as well paint all six as long as i got to paint at least two just in case they're needed somewhere else in the in the build. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it is 8.30. I think it's time to uh, call, it a, <laughs> call it a day, or call it a night, you might say, on this build. I've enjoyed myself this evening. Earlier in the day, I saw a letter being delivered. Well, something anyway. And... Uh, I thought, oh, I better go check that, and then I completely forgot about it. I forgot about it until just before I was going to go to bed, actually. And then I remembered, you've got mail. <laughs> Remember America Online, you've got mail from back in the 80s? We were so impressed with that. <laughs> yeah, dial up. <laughs> oh, yeah, those were the days. Anyway... I thought I'd better check it out. So we've got a letter to look at, but we're going to save it for the morning. So <laughs> we'll see you in the morning. Well, it is morning. And uh, this doesn't say anywhere on it, do not open on camera. Got a little Christmas uh, seal there. So, uh, now isn't that nice? Somebody th was thoughtful enough to make sure that my Christmas card got here really early. It's, it's almost a whole year early. <laughs> I hope you know I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, came all the way from, oh, hey, okay, all right, you know what, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to recompose so I can show you these, okay, yeah, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to uh, recompose the camera so that I can get nice and close on this. All right, Jane and Dave. Well, thank you, Jane and Dave. Get ready to hit your space bar so that you can pause this video and be able to read the inscription that was on the back of each one of these pictures. Yeah, hopefully I got everything matched up right. Now, this must be the day for surprises. Yeah, the mail truck parks in front of my house, and uh, he, uh, whenever the mail truck parks in front of the house to do, make a delivery, it's not going to be just letters. It's usually a package. Now, I was actually expecting something, you might say, kind of important this today. Last night, I, uh, I ordered a uh, smartphone, finally. And uh, I got it from Best Buy, and they said that it might possibly be delivered today already. So I'm thinking, okay, what do we got here? 
Okay, this is called Panic Pete. Squeeze his belly and his eyes and ears pop. Okay, well, let's uh, give it a try here. Squeeze his belly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I thought I thought at first maybe it was something uh, you know when I have the my compulsive uh, poking disorder going on and instead of poking at the part, I was supposed to poke his belly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, panic beat. Okay. For those oh Ron moments. <laughs> yeah, I've said that a few times, haven't I? Okay. All right. Let's let's see if we can't actually do something back here today. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thomas H. Griffiths. Now, wait a minute. Isn't that the same person that uh, gave me this? I'm pretty sure it's the same, same, same guy. Okay, maybe in the comments you... Uh, <laughs> uh, Thomas, could you let me know? Are you the same? Are you the same person? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much. Okay. So what I'm trying to do here is do these pieces in order of how they come in the manual as we work our way to the back. And I guess before I glue these down, which I will do off camera because we we have already done pieces exactly like this a couple or three times before. But here's something fairly fairly different, you might say, in a way. It's got uh, pins on, on the bottom here. One, two, there's just three pins to help line it up. And I think what I'm going to try and do is instead of instead of gluing the, uh, put, putting little drops of glue in the holes, although maybe that might be a good idea. Uh, uh, I was thinking maybe it might be, be better to just hold this down. There. These things fit really well. Um, put something on there that doesn't have to be very heavy. Just a little block of wood even. And then, and then, uh, maybe on the inside, let's see, uh, which, which, which side is going to be visible from the case? Okay, this is going to be to the back of the case. So, so that means that we're going to be viewing in like this. So if I want to put any kind of glue along the edge, I'm going to want to do it from this side and just let it wick its way along. I, I know I, I didn't seem to have too much problem when I did that sort of thing with the, Bismarck and the hood and I think even on the Rodney uh, So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do that uh, Maybe I'll re recompose. I'll uh, put the camera over on the other side and we'll we'll look in at this from this direction here Okay, before I uh, Continue on here. I just wanted to uh, mention uh, To Jane and Dave. Thank you so much for that uh, note that you put in there that was that's very touching uh, yeah I'm, I'm always uh, sort of blown away when people send me little notes or say something like that um, I, I'm humbled and honored thank you
Okay. Okay, we've got our large splinter rail on. This actually in real life must have been quite a good size. And uh, we got these three pieces down and these three pieces down. And now moving back, we've got what's known as M28s. And they have to, yeah, they fit quite easily. I don't have to do any machining you might say to get those to fit they just sort of fall into place and they are they are symmetrical so it doesn't matter which way they go it, at first i thought there was little hinges on on one side but actually they're on both sides so all right i'll um uh, i'll move in a little bit closer here Okay, now this time don't let it drip onto the deck. I'm hoping that's going to get on there. I might have to use the extra thin. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to just to put a little bit of extra thin and let it wick its way around. Okay, where is it? There we go. Okay, I don't think I need to push down on those and wiggle them because what if I do, it's going to kind of ooze out and go up the sides. So we'll, we'll just let that dry now like that and I think it's going to be okay. According to our manual in step number 10, we have 11 more pieces to drop down on the deck here. Like here and here and here and here. And a couple of really tiny ones go here and here. Um, yeah, then we've got some, I have to, I have to paint some of uh, these things if you remember. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and uh, maybe paint those later this afternoon. I'll probably do it off camera. I don't see any reason why I'd want to, do I want to try out the airbrush again? One of the viewers was mentioning how that these cheap airbrushes, that they work fine at first and then, uh, and then they start clogging up. So I think what I'm going to do with this uh, timber tech that I've got, I'm going to use it, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, exclusively, and uh, stop poking, and uh, and just see if that happens. Um, you know, it, you know, we should be able to tell by uh, <laughs> episode 2000 if there's something wrong with it. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, everybody, and all being well, we're going to see you tomorrow.